today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. It is a week before Election Day. One week before we choose the next president of the United States of America. And we're going to talk about where they stand on the issues. We're going to give you a rundown of where Harris and Trump stands on the issues so you'll know what you're voting for today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. Hey! Let's get this thing started. You know, this has been a long road coming. Very long road. We've been watching this now since Election Day, 2020, yeah, 2019, 2020. It's been a long road. January 6th, Afghanistan. War in Ukraine, Hamas attacking Israel, inflation through the roof, legals coming over the border. Biden lost his mind, coup d'etat, trying to kill Trump. All kind of mess happening. And now we are a week away of all of this ending. We're going to have a new president whether it be Kamala Harris or whether it be Donald Trump, because Joe Biden is out of the game. And you're going to have to decide. I've told you where I stand. The Democratic Party, I've always told you, is an evil institution. It's an evil institution in the history of the world. Part of slavery from 1800 to 1860, the part of the Confederacy from 1860 to 1865. The part of Jim Crow, from 1865 to 1965. Now it's a part of transgenderism, abortion up to the ninth month, and even after the ninth month. You might as well call it just child murder. Abortion, if it's nothing else, it is just age discrimination. They decide that uh, if you are less than uh, nine and a half months old, you can die. Part of sexually grooming children the most expensive educational system in the world and can't teach black children how to read. So it's, it's, it's a law-breaking party. Allow illegals over the border. Say it's virtuous. Allow drugs and fentanyl into the inner cities. Keep people in poverty. Keep black people and just emaciated and poor and afraid, locking them in jail. And Kamala Harris is part of that party. She represents it. And if she runs, and she's running for president, and if she wins, she's going to keep all that going. So what are we going to talk about today? I'm going to tell you where these jokers stand on all these issues. So you can go ahead and vote. I'm taking this from a biblical worldview. I'm taking it from a historical worldview. I'm taking it from a common sense worldview, economic. You have to be an educated voter. I think that as a Christian, everything that you do and everything that you say should be driven by the word of God and from your Christian religion. We are not perfect. That is why we are Christians. We are made perfect in the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Not by anything that we do, not by any of our deeds. We, at our best, will still us filthy rags. But we are to strive to obey his commandments and live based upon his laws. And based on that, let's get rolling. The most important issue in this election, as far as I'm concerned, is abortion. It's life and death. A society is judged by how well it treats the people that cannot help themselves, how they treat children, how they treat the elderly, how they treat the unborn. We murder uh, over 1.5 million children in this country every year. We murder so many of them that we are beyond the rate of replacement. 
The rate of replacement is 2.1. That's just to keep us where we are. We're now at about 1.6, and we've been there for 10 years. And Kamala Harris is mad because Donald Trump has made it harder to have an abortion in America. She's mad because um, the three Supreme Court justices that Donald Trump put on the court voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. Overturning Roe v. Wade did not stop abortion. It just said the federal government has no say in it anymore. Abortion is going back to the states, and every state now has its own abortion laws. California and New York say you can abort a baby up to the ninth month. They don't care if you come out of Tennessee or Mississippi to do it. But Mississippi and Alabama are very, are very restrictive when it comes down to, to abortion. So when people say I can't have an abortion in America, that's a lie. I wish you couldn't have an abortion or wouldn't have one, but to say that you can is a lie. Kamala Harris wants to be able to abort children after they're born. Then she voted against, well, if you didn't get a chance to vote on it, they blocked voting on in the Senate, the Born Alive Bill. What's the Born Alive Bill? If a child survives an abortion, they usually let the guy's child just lay on the table and die. Yes, they do. So they wanted to pass a law, and it came through the Congress, but they wouldn't hear it in the Senate, where Kamala Harris is the tie-breaking vote. This says that if a child survives an abortion, the doctor has to render aid to that child or the doctor would get in trouble. And the Democrats blocked it. So they have abortion up to the ninth month, and then they have murder after the child is born and it's legal in America to murder children. As I said before, abortion is only age discrimination. Because if a child is in his mother's womb, and it's and it's and it's, and it's, and it's less than nine and a half weeks old, nine nine months, nine and a half months old. The child is usually still gestating. You can kill it. Same child. But as soon as the child is born, in most states, you can't do anything to it. Kamala Harris is an unrestricted abortion. When you ask her the question, what restrictions she will put on abortion, she lies. Donald Trump, when you ask him about what, what restrictions he put on abortion, he said that the federal government should have nothing to do with, with abortion. It belongs to the states. That's where they stand. But Trump has always said he was pro-life. Kamala Harris says, kill every baby you can find. question you must have is that when you vote for a person who says that they are going to use the federal government to murder children, and Jesus Christ has explicitly said that anybody that harms one of these little ones is better that a millstone be tied around their neck and they be thrown into the sea, and you then vote for a woman who has told you over and over again she has made abortion the pivotal plank of her whole campaign. She was the first presidential or best vice presidential candidate to visit an abortion clinic. Kamala doesn't want to hear about the babies being dead. Kamala wants to see the babies being dead. As I said before, she probably went back there and helped them kill one. Don't have any children herself. They want to make sure every baby she sees, she kills. God's sick woman. So if you decide to help her out and vote for her and vote for her knowing that she's going to do that, like I say again, just go ahead to the gasoline station, grab one of those pumps, put gasoline all over yourself, and light yourself on fire because that's how it's going to feel when you go to hell. For being complicit in mass murder. You've been warned. Vote for Harris. Express chicken to hell. School choice. Now, abortion is important, but if abortion doesn't get you, good God Almighty, y'all. Educational freedom, the right to pull your child or your grandchild out of a school that is not educating them or mistreating them or sexually grooming them. This is the government trying to give your ignorant behind about $25,000 per child. Did you hear me? And just like 
the Homestead Act in 1866 after slavery, your ancestors turned that down to stay on the plantation with the master. Most of y'all gonna turn this down to stay on the plantation with your masters again. And then you're gonna try to say that slavery is not a choice. Don't you never come to me and tell me that. So Donald Trump doesn't say this was school choice. The money goes to the parent. If you want to send your child to the public education system, you can. If you want to send them to a private school, you can. If you want to homeschool them, you can. If you want to send them to a charter, you can. Your choice. Well, 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 well I, 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 don't, I don't want the choice. I want, I want the boss and the white man to decide for me. And then you're going to walk around here talking about slavery is not a choice. Listen, this is easy. They are offering you twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars to educate your child in the way that you see fit. Kamala Harris is against it. The Democrat and the Democratic Party platform is against it. Please hear me. You don't believe me? Okay, I'm gonna read it to you. I'm gonna tell you what the Democratic Party platform says. When it comes down to school choice, because y'all think I'm lying. Y'all think I'm lying. All right, here it comes. Democratic Party platform, what it says about school choice. We oppose the use of private school vouchers, tuition, tax credits, opportunity scholarships, and other schemes that divert taxpayer funded resources away from public education. Let me read that to you again. We that means the Democratic Party is in the Democratic Party 2024 platform. This is what it says. We, meaning the Democratic Party, oppose the use of private school vouchers, tuition tax credits, opportunity scholarships, and other schemes that divert taxpayer-funded resources away from public education. You know why? Because the teachers unions give 99% of their money to the Democratic Party, and the Democratic Party is going to give them raises. Will they educate your children or not? Boy, that's a good trick. Democrats are going to get black folks to turn down free money. They stay on the government school plantation. And none of these big city schools are educating any of these children. They got so few, like in Baltimore, none of the schools are proficient in math, science, or reading. Memphis, Chicago have terrible, Detroit. And when they give you an opportunity to take these children out of these monster factories and send them to church schools and private schools and, and, and boarding schools, they'll educate them properly. You turn it down. I tell you what, slavery is a choice. And you prove it. Vote for these people. And just keep the shackles on your feet. Then go walk around saying, uh, it's the Republican Party. It's the Republican Party. And Donald Trump has told you he'll give you the money to pull your children out yourself. And you said, no. You did the same thing during slavery. Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Less than 5,000 slaves left the South and went up and fought for their freedom. Most of the black men that fought for their freedom were black men that were already free, born free, or had escaped and went up north. Homestead actually stayed on the plantation. Wouldn't leave 150 acres of land. If any able-bodied man that would go take it. Only 5,000 went. They called them the exodusters. Yeah, you're choosing slavery. Now here Donald Trump offering school choice to get your children off the government plantation, and you're going to turn it down to vote for a lying, psychopath, anti-Christian bigot. You deserve what you get. LGBTQ. Donald Trump says he's going to stop the sexual grooming of children. He's not going to allow women, men and women's sports. No, no. He's not going to allow it. He's not going to allow demented men to go into the bathroom with your wife and your children. No, he's not going to allow that. Kamala Harris says she's going to give trans free transgender operations to illegals. Going to give free transgender operations to inmates in the penitentiary. Yeah, going to have inmate society what their sex is. So they can go to, a man can go into a woman's prison. It's 
crazy. They're going to give free transgender operations to children in grammar schools. Yeah. That's who you're going to vote for. Donald Trump says he's going to stop it. Again, sexually grooming and assaulting children. If you vote for this, yeah. You know, the school choice thing. The public education system says God is not welcomed here. He's not welcome. Can't pray to you, God. Oh, you can bring in drag queens to shake their behinds in your children's faces. But if you try to pray in one of those schools, they'll put you in jail. And Donald Trump said, I'll let you go to a school where your child can pray, where they can learn their Ten Commandments. And you want to keep them in a secular school. Well, God is not welcomed. And then you're going to wonder why your child acting crazy. I'll tell y'all what. Any. Teaching LGBTQ in the school, teaching your children to transition, teaching them that they're genderless. Kamala Harris wants to keep them locked in those schools. Trump says he'll let you pull them out. Reminds me what I saw on Roots. Scene starts as a woman is walking at night across the plantation with her daughter. Daughter's a pretty little young thing. And the daughter's looking just frightened and scared. And the mother is telling the daughter that once this is over, he might give you a shawl or he might give you a present. It didn't know until a few seconds later that the mother's escorting her daughter to the overseer's house to be raped. She's a virgin. She knocks on the overseer's door. He opens up, white man. She says, I bought it to you, master. He grabs the girl, pulls into the cabin, then rips her clothes, and, and she, the little girl screams. Then he slams the door in the mother's face and the mother walks away. You're doing the same thing now. I saw in this movie, Birth of a Nation. It's about Nat Turner's rebellion. There was this scene on the plantation where this rich guy from another plantation was visiting the plantation that Nat Turner was on. And the slaves were serving them at dinner, and one of these slave women were very attractive. At the end of the night, when this very important man went to bed, he he, uh, he requested one of the slave women who was serving them. He wanted her to come and service him that night and sleep with her, or rape her that night. Well, this slave woman was married, and uh, master went to Nat Turner and told Nat Turner to go get go fetch the girl. And Nat Turner had to go and talk to her husband first and tell him that the master wanted his wife to come and sleep with this white man in the plantation house. Oh, he protested. But he had to sit outside and listen to the gyrations and the sounds of his wife being raped by this man while he sat there and he did nothing. And we supposed to look at that with, 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 with sadness and I look at it with contempt. You let it happen. You didn't offend your family. But you're doing the same thing right now. Trump said here telling you he'll let you take your let he'll allow you, he'll let you take your children out of this terrible, wicked satanic system. And you vote against him because you want to vote for a Democrat. And then you're gonna tell me slavery is not a choice. Y'all think about this when you go to the polls. Let your child stay with the, stay with a system that is ungodly, that is sexually grooming them, and that's not educating them, or vote for the person that says, I'm going to emancipate them and give you freedom. How you vote is going to determine whether or not you're a slave. And you'll see, slavery is sure enough a choice. Here's another slave question. Gone. Kamala try to act like tell me she got a Glock. She ain't got no Glock. Kamala lying. As soon as she get power, they're gonna try to do everything they can to every gun you got because that's the only way they can keep power. It's by submission. Everywhere you find a group of black people that gather together, the first thing the Democrats do is try to take their weapon. That's what they did at the end of the Civil War. As soon as the black men became free, they said confiscate their guns. First time gun laws were ever, ever passed in America. 
was keep black men from protecting themselves at the end of the Civil War. And now, even to this day, they send out the black preacher, the black politician, black civil rights workers to tell black people, turn your guns in. We got to get these guns off the street. Doing the bidding of their master. To take the, 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 the declaw you and take away your fangs. There's only two things that allow themselves to be disarmed. It's a slave and it's a pet. And I'm neither. So when you vote for a candidate that says he's going to take away your right to keep him by arms, you've just voted to be a slave. And you remember what Vince Everett Ellison said today. The slave is a choice and you're choosing to be one. Legal immigration. You know what Trump says? He's going to start deporting all of them. Kamala says that she don't even know how they got over here. She's probably in the borders are. Rents are going sky high. People for hardly find places to stay now because you know what? I got, we got 20 million illegals competing for housing. What, 20 million houses are just supposed to sprout up out the ground when they come over? 20 million competing for jobs. Go straight to the ghettos, competing for space in the schools. Yeah, they gave them $400,500 per month, and, they, and FEMA families are getting, after the hurricanes, are getting $750. Yeah. Illegals are getting treated better than American citizens. Trump says he's going to start a mass deportation. And guess when that happens? You know what's going to happen? Wages are going to rise up. Guess who's going to benefit from that more than anything else? The black community. Rents are going to go down. Guess who's going to benefit from that? The black community. Crime is going to go down because they are in the, these neighborhoods, the black neighborhoods doing all the crime and selling the dope. Guess who's going to benefit from that? The black community. They ain't in my neighborhood. They're not in the neighborhood of my friends. They're in the neighborhood of poor black people. And that's why poor black people are rebelling right now. So if you want more illegals in your community selling dope, competing for space, making the rents go up, taking away money that is that is designated for the Amer for Americans, you vote for Kamala Harris. If you want them out, you want higher wages, you want lower rent, you want less crime, you want less fentanyl, you vote for Trump. The war, the war is all around the world. Man, it started out when we left Afghanistan. Those people in Afghanistan that fought with us over 20 years. They had cooked on our bases. They had fought beside us. They were interpreters. We had promised them that we never leave them and we take care of them. Because we know the Taliban never got in, in power. It's going to kill them all. And what did Joe Biden and Kamala Harris do? They left them. And while while we were leaving, they blew they blew up thirteen of our, our soldiers, and we didn't even go back to the to 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 avenge them. You saw the picture; all those Afghanis just hanging on the airplane because they were so afraid. They know the Taliban was going to kill them all. And um, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris left those people to die, and they've been killing them ever since we left. Untold numbers. They put these burkas on these women, and they catch with the the burka on, they just beat the living hell out you in the street. Like a Mississippi, Alabama whooping, man. Shoot. They catch you not praying five times a day when that sign come to pray, call for prayer. Three dudes will grab you. Four of them. One will grab you by one arm, one grab you by the other one. They grab you by your legs. They put you down on the ground. And the fifth one just take a stick and beat the living. Hell out you on the street. In the middle of front of everybody. That's what they did. We had an air base, Bagan Air Base over there, right between China and Russia. Bagram Air Base. We paid for it. Millions of dollars. Guess who got it now? Chinese. Yeah. Ukraine. Joe Biden lying to Zelensky, telling him he's going to get him in NATO. Zelensky trying to hold on to get into NATO. Joe Biden lying to him. Kamala Harris lying, lying to him. Vladimir Putin tell him, you better not get into NATO. We're going to put him in NATO. You better not. We're going to put him in. Vladimir said, you put him in, we're going to invade. We're going to put him in. Vladimir invaded. Over a million people died in that war.
And they've said that they are using Ukraine to diminish the Russian military. Did you hear me? You're letting hundreds of thousands of people die just to diminish the Russian military. It's a sick game that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are playing, killing those people over there. They said they're going to keep it going, keep it going. They ain't going to stop it. No, nope, they ain't going to stop it. We got to win. and you, they, get it. they can't win. It's a war of attrition, and they're never going to beat Russia. Biden said he'll, uh, Trump said he'll come in and stop that war first week. First week. Kamala Harris ain't thought about stop stopping that war. She wants to kill those people to feed the American industrial complex. She wants to make sure that those bombs keep dropping, those airplanes keep getting shot down, the drones keep getting shot down, and the bullets keep being used because all of it comes from America. Trump says he'll stop it the first week. So if you want to keep seeing those people die, vote for Kamala Harris. And then we got the war in the Middle East. Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. Boy, them jokers know they messed up when they attacked Israel. Because Israel has been killing people ever since. And Joe Biden is trying to get a ceasefire. Did you know they, that they killed over 100 Americans that day? And they got American hostages over there right now? And instead of Joe Biden helping Israel take these jokers out, He's screaming for Israel to stop, even though they, they killed Americans on that day and they have American hostages. That's how weak this guy is, he and Kamala Harris. Instead of saying, oh, you killed Americans? And you got American hostages? Oh, you're a walking dead man. How do we stop this war? You surrender? That's how we dealt with Japan. That's how we dealt with Germany. That's how we dealt with Italy in World War II. You surrender. And then we rebuild. Cease fire. So they can come back together and attack them again? No, no, no. Trump gets in, we're going to decapitate them like they've already done and we're going to make them beat them till they quit. Because these people have said two things. Israel and the United States of America has no right to exist. And Joe Biden wants, and Kamala Harris wants to negotiate with them. You decide. Do you want to keep make sure these terrorists stay alive? Or do you want to make sure that they're taken out? If you want the terrorists to stay alive and keep attacking America and Israel, vote for Kamala Harris. If you want to see every terrorist out there dead, you vote for Trump. Your decision. I made mine. And then you got the most, maybe the stupidest thing I ever saw in my political life. Kamala Harris coming out lying about being black. Of all the stupid things I've ever seen in my life, that was the stupidest. A Caucasian woman going to come out and say, Vote for me. I'm black. And then when Trump says, well, up until a few, three years ago, she was Indian. Uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage. And she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. And now she wants to be known as black. And everybody checked and found out that she is, in fact, Indian. And now she just calls herself a person of color. I'm the first person of color. She lied about who she was. And she's been caught. Ladies and gentlemen, that by itself is disqualifying. Is disqualifying. If you will walk up in front of a camera and lie about your racial heritage, it's like a man walking up and lying about being a man. He's really a woman. That's not strange with the Democrats right now because you never know a man from a woman now. She says she's the first, she'll be the first female president. How do you know that when Democrats say the gender don't exist anymore? I mean, how's she going to say 
she a female when they don't know what a female is. They asked Katarji Brown Jackson, the Supreme Court justice that, that uh, Joe Biden put on the seat, says, uh, Judge Jackson, she, yes. Can you give me a definition of a woman? She says, uh, I'm not a biologist. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm you not a biologist. The meaning of the word Why don't somebody ask Kamala Harris that, that question since she says she'll be the first female president? Can you give me the definition of what a woman is? See what she says. I mean, I think she's so ignorant she probably don't know what a woman is. Because she's shown that she don't know what black is. Because she said she was that. People, this is a shame. That the Democrats have put up somebody this stupid and this flawed and this ignorant to run the most powerful nation in the world and be the most powerful person in the world. What is more stupid is that you people, some of you out there are even considering voting for this woman. And giving her the nuclear football and giving her control of a $7 trillion budget. Kamala Harris started her career running around as Willie Brown's side piece in San Francisco. Willie Brown was, was in his 60s. She was 29 years old. They got a video of her on Willie Brown's arm with a person asking her if she's Willie Brown's daughter. Willie Brown married. Everybody knew he was married. She knew he was married. That means the woman has no scruples. She's running around with Montel Williams, running around in San Francisco. They're all kind of nasty mess, man. Then she married this m -off guy when she turned 50. And m -off is a beta male. You can look at him and tell you about how he act. She won't take his name, won't take his religion, wouldn't or couldn't have him any children, ain't gonna spend all of his money. Him off didn't care. He the second gentleman. Show you how he think. So she's spending all of him off's money. She gets elected to the Senate. Then she wants the president can't make it. Fall out before hour. So she blackmailed Joe Biden and to make no vice president. How'd she do it? She got a bunch of 100 greasy preachers, thugs, and rappers to write Joe Biden a letter saying, if you do not pick a black woman as your vice presidential candidate, we're going to dig six your campaign. I'm going to tell y'all something. Like I said before, I worked in the penitentiary. Don't too much scare me. But if a bunch of thugs and rappers sent me a letter telling me that they're going to do something to me. If I don't do what they say, I just might do what they say like Joe Biden did. So Joe Biden, this scared Joe Biden to death. If you want to deal with, a, if you want something that's going to scare a racist, white, Southern Democrat, let a hundred black thugs and rappers say that they're going to come and do something to him if he don't do what they say. Joe Biden folded like a cheap suit. It was only one person he could choose, only one black female senator, and that was Kamala Harris. And he chose her. So everybody knew Joe Biden had dementia. Everybody knew he was crazy and he wasn't going to make it. So Kamala just slid around for about three or four years laughing and giggling, acting ignorant, you know, aggravating people. And finally, when everybody found out that Joe Biden was crazy, she then went behind him again and did the Brutus, Benedict Arnold, Judas to him, stabbed him in the back. Cut his throat. Wasn't meant to be the daughter, Joe. Next thing you know, Joe Biden laying on the floor said, hey, two, come on. Mm, 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 mm. Did you come betray the son of man with a kiss? Come on. Took him out. Cold, man, cold. Believe me, y'all, Kamala didn't concoct this. She ain't got enough sense to do it. Somebody else behind with the strings. Now, the very same person that's running the government while Joe Biden 
is as crazy as a road lesbian. You don't know what's going on. Who's running the country right now? It ain't Kamala. Those very same people chose Kamala Harris to sit in that seat. Faceless, the deep state. And that's why they fear Donald Trump, because Donald Trump knows who all of them are. And when he gets back in power, they fear they all going to be gone. They're going to all be exposed. These people have done a lot of damage. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, the Democrats the last four years. People have lost their lives. People have lost their fortunes. They've lost their homes. They've killed six million children, murdered six million children in the abortion bans. Some of their body parts. They've destroyed the education of millions of young children who will never ever learn to read or write because of them locking them in these no good public schools and make slaves of them. They've caused wars all over the world. All of those little, all those people that are dying in Gaza and Ukraine. The blood is on their hands. Millions of people in Ukraine. Tens of thousands in Gaza and Lebanon now. Dying. How many women in South Afghanistan have been killed? And how many of the people who helped us in Afghanistan over 20 years have been murdered by the Taliban because of Kamala Harris? Joe Biden. She says she can help make every decision. How many children have they sexually groomed? Suicide. And drug abuse. Drug OODs. Well, the number one causes of death between Americans between the ages of 18 and 40. Suicide. Suicide. And drug abuse. Our country is dying. We're beyond the rate of replacement. We're in a death spiral. And they never even mention it. You know why? Because this is a death cult. All they do is meditate on blood. Look at where they rule. Detroit, San Francisco, Oakland, Portland, Seattle, Memphis, New Orleans, Atlanta, everywhere they rule. Death, mayhem, destruction, and they want to bring it all right to the heartland of America. This is why you got to vote right. They see this whole nation as a cotton plantation with them as the overseer. And I refuse to be their slave. Like the founding fathers, I pledge my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor to that one fact. You ain't putting no shackles on me. Try it. Try and come and take my gun away. Try and take my freedom. I don't ask the government for my freedom. I defy you to come take it from me. So I hope that in this spirit, you go to the polls. I hope that in this spirit of Christian love and virtue that you put these jokers back on their back foot and tell them that you've reached your high watermark here in America. And I can, I'm, I'm going to predict this. I predict that the Democrats are done. I said on Tucker Carlson two years ago, they're done. The American people see through them, they're done. And the most beautiful thing about them being done is they're going to be taken out with the black male vote. Yeah, that young black male generation that I've been dealing with, that I've been talking to, that I've been pulling up, that bloggers and podcasters like me have been going out and getting without any help from the GOP. Why? Because it's just the right thing. We've been doing it. Not because we believe in the GOP, because we believe in God, because we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe he reigns supreme. This is not a GOP message. This is a Jesus Christ mes message. And I will not be silent in the presence of evil any longer. I'll call it out. And all of you weak, jellyback, punk men on the Democratic Party who will vote for this, you stink in my nostrils. I hold you not a contempt. And I'm going to take special pleasure in seeing you go down on November the 5th. It's going to be a happy day. And we're not going to look back. This is going to be the demise and the destruction 
of the Democratic Party in perpetuity. The last page of my book in 25 lines, I ask, how do you deal with this slaughterhouse? Do you give it an assistant desist order? Do you beg it? Do you ask it? I said, no, you brought up. And in this election, we're going to light the fuse. With that, go to my website, thisspeakstruth.com. On it, you'll find all my wares. You're going to find all four of my books, Iron Triangle, Crime, Inc., 25 Lies, and The Inner Tolerance. You'll find T-shirts. You'll find caps. You'll find my great documentary, We Go to Hell for Me. Because we've decided, at least I have, I ain't going to hell for these Democrats. You might go to hell for them. Go ahead on. Put some gasoline on yourself and light yourself on fire for these people. I know you're out there with battered wife syndrome, Stockholm syndrome. You kiss them with your dying lips. Well, that's exactly what you're going to be doing. Go ahead and vote for them. Go ahead and go to hell for them. You'll be there, but I won't. But for the rest of you, I am here to wake you up. I hope I did you some good today. Next Tuesday, we'll be voting for the President of the United States of America. And I want to thank the people down in Brownsville, Tennessee, who did such a great job for me and April Chapman and Henry Morris. They brought me back to my hometown. They treated me well. I spoke to the people. We talked about coming together. We talked about loving one another. We talk about all Christians standing together and fighting off this same satanic onslaught because the barbarians are at the gate. Ms. Sarah Loveless, Dr. John Freeman, and the Gideon Army and the Republican Party of Haywood County, I thank you. You're all patriots. You're all people of God. I love you all. And I'll be back soon. So I want you to join me again next week for another Vince Everett Ellison show.